been led by the spirit of God to minister on something very important. There are so many of us who God led by his grace to make pledges in church on various projects. Some of us made pledges to support the mission work. Some of us we've done so many pledges. And there are some of us that have really been so faithful with their pledges. And there are others who have even forgotten that they made the pledges. Hallelujah. And the, it's on this note that I want to bring you the word of God. So that you get to know what God thinks about every time that you pledge, you fulfill a pledge in the house of God. What does God mean? And my message to you in a few minutes is going to be the miracle of seed faith. Say it with me, the miracle of seed faith. Can you imagine it coincides with the voice of God for today? Hallelujah. Genesis chapter number 8 verses number 22. Genesis 8, 22. Let's begin from verses for the sake of context, from verses number 20. Glory to God. Let's read it together. One, two, go. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cast the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, seed shall not cease. But I want you to take notice of something. I want you to read with me verses number 22. What does it say? While the earth remains. No. I know everybody reads it as seed time and harvest. Until when I took a second look. And I looked in my Bible. Between the seed. There is a dash then time. And harvest. Now, to pronounce this, it goes seed, time, and harvest. Can you say with me? Seed, seed time, time, and harvest. Time. Now, there is a difference between saying seed, time, and harvest. And seed, time, and harvest. Glory to God. It says seed, Time and harvest. While the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. Glory to God. I'm talking to you on the miracle of seed faith. The miracle of seed faith. One of the things that you need to know is that when God created the earth, God handed the earth to man. And before the coming of the Lord, we are the landlords of the earth. Say with me, I am the landlord of the earth. God has given you the earth as your inheritance. And you that is born again, you are the seed of Abraham. God willed the whole earth to Abraham. And the Bible says, you being the seed of Abraham, you are a partaker of the inheritance of the promises of God. Now while the earth remains. One of the miracles that God put on earth. To help each one of us. Enjoy the miracles of God. The blessings of God on earth. Is the principle of seed faith. This is where you apply your faith. According to the seed principle of life. That whatsoever you sow, that will you reap. 
Glory to Jesus. And God gave us seeds to cause miracles to happen in life. The greatest key for a miracle to happen, the greatest secret you can ever understand is the miracle of the seed. And that's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 9 and verses number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses number 10. Let's read it together. One, two, go. It says what? Now, he that ministered seed to the sower, bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Glory to God. The Bible says God ministers to every man's seed, and then out of that seed, he ministers food, that is bread to be eaten. And he says he ministers seed to the sower to cause increase. The purpose of the seed is to cause increase. Increase of fruits of righteousness. Glory to God. What are fruits of righteousness? This is life to the full. That's what Jesus came to bring for us. He says, I have come so that you may have life and have it to the full. That includes longevity of life. That includes divine health. That includes joy. That includes things that make your heart happy. What are the things that make your heart happy? The desires of your heart. Whatever that you desire. Whatever that you need. Everything that you will ever need in your life is in a seed. Glory to God. And so when God asks you to give a seed, when you make a pledge and a commitment, I want you to know the purpose is this. He says, multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. Glory to God. And where the fruit of your righteousness is threatened, sometimes you'll find yourself in a predicament that you don't like. All of a sudden, you're in a crisis. You're in a financial crisis. You're in a family crisis. You are in a healthy crisis. Still, the answer is in a seed. And this time, he called the seed differently. He named it your riches. He says, therefore, the ransom of your life. Proverbs chapter number 13 and verses 8. Proverbs 13, 8. What does it say? One, two, go. It says what? The ransom of a man's life. The rescue of a man's life. Hallelujah. The rescue of your life. When you're going through something that you don't like, there is this Judgment that has come on your life. There is this thing that is destroying you. Destroying the works of your hands. There is a devourer that has come your way. The Bible says out of that look to your riches. And what are these riches? The seed that God ministers. He ministers seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He says, look into that. That is where your solution is. Your rescue is in that. Glory to God. And that's the reason why when God brought Israel from Egypt. Now, the portions of the scriptures are a bit long, so we may not be able to read them. But when you look at Genesis, in Genesis chapter number 12... They were going to travel from Egypt all the way to Canaan. And it was going to be a journey where they're going to, do, to go through the wilderness. God did not give them food. God did not give them, you know, there are precious things for such a journey. And one of it is food. But God never gave them food. Instead, God gave them favor before the Egyptians to ransack the Egyptians. And they got every precious thing that was in Egypt. The gold, the silver, the diamonds, every beautiful thing that was in Egypt. The Bible says God gave it to them by favor. Hallelujah. And when they went in the wilderness with all this jewelry, 
God told them in Genesis, I mean Exodus 25 from verses 1 to 9. He said, whatever that you brought in Egypt, I want you to build me a tabernacle. Get me the gold, get me the silver, get me everything that you brought from Egypt. Bring it to me to build a tabernacle. And when they built this tabernacle to God, the Bible says in Psalms 105, as a result of this tabernacle that they built, using all the wealth that they had gotten from Egypt. And you know, when God built it, it was such an extravagant tabernacle. It had so many things. The altars were overlaid with gold. You know, God spent a lot of gold in building the tabernacle. Glory to God. And it was not just gold, but pure gold. And all the precious items. God found a way that everything that was brought from Egypt was for the building of the tabernacle. When the tabernacle was built, there was an atmosphere that Israel carried from henceforth. In Psalms 105, verses 37. Psalms 105, verses 37. The Bible testifies of what happened to Israel when they came out of Egypt. What does it say? One, two, go. Yes. With silver and gold. Uh-huh. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. That means grandpa who left Egypt when he was 80. His strength never abated. He just kept on becoming younger and younger. No wonder Caleb at the age of 80 he says, I still have a strength of a 40 year old. Just give me this mountain, I will take it on. Why? Because they had built a tabernacle that God had requested them to do by the power of a seed. And as a result of that, the Bible says the gold multiplied in their midst. They gave gold and God. That is the mystery of a seed. A seed has power to multiply. Whatever you give, it multiplies. Glory to God. And the Bible says the gold multiplied. Not only did the gold multiply, God increased their strength. There was none who was feeble among their, their tribes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that's why even when the greatest tragedy happened to man, the solution that God gave was a seed. In Genesis chapter number 3, after man had been overthrown and he fell away from God. The first thing that God told them. He said for this mistake to be corrected. It's going to be by the seed of a woman. Genesis chapter 3 verses number 15. God testified. Telling seed and he said. Whatever that you've done to destroy man. The solution to man is going to be a seed. And he says, I'll put an enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise you ahead and you shall bruise his heel. He says, the seed of the woman will crush your head. Glory to God. It was in a seed that God used to bring men from that greatest cal calamity. And no one in John 3.16 the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. God had to give a seed of his son. He did not give a prophet. He did not give an angel. He didn't send them. He sent his own very son his very best so that he can win man back to himself. And today you are seated here because God's seed was given. Yes. Hallelujah. God's seed was given. You are a child of God because God's seed was given.
You have a testimony in your life because God's seed was given. Can I have an amen? amen? Glory to God. And that's why you see a seed cannot be underestimated. When God asks you to give a seed or out of your own volition, you make that pledge. You want to build a church of God. You make that commitment. You make, you know, you want to do something for missions. You you want to do something it's an urge from the spirit. You are pledging a certain amount. You want to do something. I want to tell you that it is for reason. The mystery of a seed will always result in a miracle. Glory to God. There is no seed that will not give you a harvest. Let me tell you something. When we got married as a young couple, we had a desire to have children. But we waited for the children to come through the first year, nothing. And of course, in case you don't know, I know myself, I am a praying machine. And I thank God for that. If there is one thing that God has helped me to do is to pray. And I'm trying every day to pray better than I prayed yesterday. I got myself involved in prayer. And I began to seek the face of the Lord. I would do several prayer fasts and so on. The second year came through nothing. The third year came through. And that was the time I got to know about my spiritual father. I go to him. He spoke a prophetic word to me. He said, God will bless me with children. I received the word of God. I prayed over it again. The fourth year came through. I had a prophecy hung on me that I'm going to have children. But on the fourth year, I remember we're driving. It was my very first car that God had given us. I was driving going to church. It was a rainy season like this one. And while we're going to church, there was a couple that was carrying a child and it was raining on this child. And God spoke to all of us at once and said, give this car to that family to take care of that child. We got the car. That's one thing I've learned. Once God has spoken, I don't hesitate. And I thank God for that. There are some people when God speaks, they hesitate. And in hesitation, doubt comes. When doubt comes, Satan will begin to give you a program and divert you away from God's blessing. But the moment we arrived in church, when we parked the car, the first thing that we did in that service is we got the car key and we gave it to that couple. To take care of the child. As God had told us. And he did not tell us that he was going to give us children. But he knew we had a desire for children. And you know what? That was what brought a miracle of children in our lives. <clears throat> Glory to God. Now somewhere along the way. There was a man that came into our ministry. When this man came in. I'm telling you that a seed is very powerful. This man came into the ministry and he stayed in our ministry for only two weeks. When this man stayed in the ministry for two weeks, by then our church was flourishing. We're about, I think we're about 1,500 members. But after two weeks of this man's ministry in our ministry, a terrible thing happened. By the time I discovered young girls were pregnant left, right and center. The church began to scatter. We had different, you know. I mean, the church just began to split. I said church rise from 1.5. It just began to drop. From 1.5 to 1,000 to 500. And the church was going down drastic. And everything came as a result of this man here. Because God had told me not to invite him. But there were some things that I needed. And this guy was so good at it. 
I needed money and was very good at raising money. He was good at fundraising in church. And the fundraising came at a very great price. I saw ladies coming to my office, families coming to my office. Oh, I'm pregnant. Uh, who was responsible? Uh, that friend of yours. Uh, oh, you know, I'm going, the, the, that friend of yours. And it was not only from here. It was in different, wherever I'd taken him, there was someone who was pregnant. And many others came out. And they would say, you know, this guy slept with me. He used me. He used me. And the church just got scattered like that. I fell before the Lord and I said, Lord, I've sinned against you. I didn't listen to you. Show me kindness. And there and then I went into all. I began with what I had. I got everything that I had. And I went ahead and got everything that was in our ministry accounts. I placed it as an offering. And I caught the first flight to look for my man of God, my spiritual father. I arrived where he was. And I dropped that seed at his feet. And I said, I need God to help me. The work that I'm doing is all scattered because of the mistake that I made. Inviting a wrong man into our ministry. Well, my spiritual father received that offering and prayed a prayer over my life. It didn't take long. God began to gather us back. And today we are where we are by the grace of God. That is the midst of a seed. A seed saves you from disaster. A seed has a way. How? We don't know. But it has a way. That every time that you put your faith to work. Using your seed. It will turn around your situation. I've told you the story before. A young lady was engaged. She's in Tanzania now. She had gone to school. She met a guy in Tanzania. Who wanted to marry her. The guy is from Burundi. And all of a sudden. Before they went to their pastor. She found herself. Went for tests. She was HIV positive. She comes. She wanted to commit suicide. It was such a great embarrassment to her. She wanted to commit suicide. But by the help of her brother. She was introduced to me. To cut the long story short. I said woman. Give a seed. Give a seed. She followed me to Kenya. Brought her seed. I prayed with her. After giving her seed. She checked herself twice. In all the hospitals where she found she was positive. She checked herself twice. She was negative, negative. <laughs> Hallelujah. And today she's happily married. With her husband, with a family. Without HIV and AIDS. That is the power of a seed. Hallelujah. And so any time when God asks you to give a seed, I want you to know that it's a key to your life. There are things that cannot go away from your life until when a seed falls to the ground before the altar. Praise God. Let me quickly give you the four miracles of a seed. The beer about seeds is that many of us have some knowledge of agriculture. But, and we are able to interpret some of these things. Number one is that one thing about a seed, it will always produce a desired harvest. Every time that you give a seed, a seed will give you a desired harvest. Glory to God. If you plant groundnuts, you will have a harvest of groundnuts. If you plant maize, you will have the harvest of maize. If you plant bananas, you will have a harvest of bananas. That is the power of a seed. Glory to God. What you need, it will give you 
that desired harvest. And that's why God said, while the earth remains, seed, time, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. Glory to God. When your seed falls on the ground, it's just a matter of time. It will give you the desired harvest. Glory to God. And so you can plant a seed. You can plant a seed for your healing. You can plant a seed for your peace. You can plant a seed for your finances. You can plant a seed for your job. You can plant a seed. Whatever that you need in life. The key is in a seed. Never forget one of my daughters in church. Just immediately after lockdown. She came to me with a seed. And said my father. I have lived my life before God. I have seen younger girls get married. I have not found somebody to marry me. And she said. I believe that if you give me a father's blessing. God will make a way for me. Because the age that I've reached now. I need a miracle from God. And she said. I took time to gather my seed. I took time to gather my seed. And I have come to plant it. You see, it, it matters also the kind of seed that you are giving. I always see in the village, every time that you wanted, every time they are harvesting, what would happen to my parents is they would go and look out before the harvest happens. They look out for the best of the best of the harvest. And they would cut off. Maybe it is sorghum or millet or whatever. They would go and cut it off. Cut it. They do, that harvest is done before the main harvest. You know? And then they get it aside and preserve it different from others. And they say this is seed for next year's crop. Anybody who has ever seen that happen? Aha! Uh -huh, majority of us know this. Glory to God. So it matters the seed we give. Some people just come with it. the leftovers. That's what they give. Leftovers. Leftovers. I've always seen groundnuts. When you plant groundnuts, those leftovers, if you plant it, what does it give you? Do you expect a good harvest? That's why some people don't experience good harvest because they come with leftovers. They don't give their best. They give leftovers. Some give after running all their errands. That's when they give the leftovers. But this sister said, I took my time. And then I prayed for, I said, before the year ends, you shall have a testimony. That was, I think, in Feb or something, I don't know. It didn't take long. The month was June, if I can remember. I was in my office. She calls me and says, my father, where are you? I told her I'm in the office. Says, wait for me, don't move. I waited. She comes with a gentleman. Gentleman sits there and she's here. Says, well... He wants to marry me. He has just proposed. And I can't say yes. Until you approve. I said lady. Do you remember you planted a seed? What are you waiting for? To cut the long story short. They are happily married today. That is the power of a seed. It will give you. A desired harvest. I don't know how many people have gotten jobs. I've gotten contracts. There are several of us who have testimonies here. When you planted a seed, you got the desired harvest that you wanted. Glory to God. And so in the same way, when you give your seed to God, the desired harvest will come your way. He said, seed, time, and harvest shall not Cease. Can I have an amen? 
For more information, visit our website embassyofgodministries.org or you can visit our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Pastor Dennis Amos Emojong. Or you can...